<laughs> right, we're good. We're on. We're live. We're fine. Wow. Everyone, is everybody here? Yeah, we're chill, yeah, bro. Okay. I think so. um, I'm gonna keep these. I'm not gonna keep these headphones on because it's fine. We tested the bikes. Yeah. I don't want to look like a loser. Yeah. I was gonna right. say, why do you have them on? Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, done loser. That yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's four people here. Okay. Um, welcome everybody, and most importantly, welcome Mr. Omar Chowdhury. Yay! Uh, Man, this brother is of sick. one, Fraser Chowdhury, and uh, we out here in Dubai. Bro. Bro. United Arab Emirates. Man, you guys gave me the whole welcome. We never used to have this in London. We need to have a Kaya yeah, in London. This is quiet. This is quiet. <laughs> okay, this is great. And I keep him. Kaya is a great, yeah. He's a great host. <laughs> Whatever this so is. Keep, keep the pancake, right? <laughs> keep this guy. Yeah. What's his name again? <laughs> so Kaya has brought, with, uh, has brought us uh, pancakes. Man, and well, fire pancakes. Regular viewers will know yes. <laughs> that when my brother was uh, a guest about a year ago, you bought the pancakes. Wow. Oh. So I had to return a favor, bro. You're right. You're welcome. The next time, <laughs> next time, big brother comes, give him a Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's the first thing. And, um, yeah. and not, uh, are, not only are these <laughs> these aren't any regular pancakes. These no, are, these, look, these look, look hey crazy. hey. What car are you driving right now, Cairo? Uh Chevrolet. Okay, forget Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> With three guys here. Hey hey, listen listen listen. Three of us out of four are driving some Japanese cars. <laughs> True. And we've gone and matched that with our pancakes because these are looking like some Japanese pancakes. They are, aren't they? They are, aren't they? Yeah. Are they, is this what they're called? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I don't. I don't. Is it? I don't think they are. They're just like. Japanese. They're just fat. Just pancakes, <laughs> just, they if someone's listening to audio pancakes, only, it's going to sound like a whole different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what you're thinking of yeah. is. Um, yeah, that's souf- like Japanese pancakes. Souffle, souffle pancakes. Yeah, these are lovely. Oh, man. Are Japanese? Yeah. They're just they're like normal pancakes. These are just pancakes. So let's talk about driving because. We've all, uh, we're all drivers here. We've all got our licenses. Yeah, um, yeah haven't we? Yeah. We're all a couple of lads. <laughs> yeah. Driving drive some cars <laughs> with some four-wheeler lads. Uh, but Omar here mm. drove in Dubai yesterday for the first time I ever. Knew, oh, really? I knew. I knew. When I was texting you, this yeah. is the conversation we're going to start with. Yeah, I'm going to. I knew when I was texting. <laughs> this is how the conversation we're going to start. So, yeah, um, I've already thought about my so answers. How, how's, how's, it, how, how's it been? <laughs> because obviously, uh, Cairo Kaya and I... Good bit seasoned Experts. on the right hand side drive. <laughs> Veterans. Yeah. Mm. We know how to drive when the steering wheel's on the left and the road's on the right. Mm. Omar, do you know that? Bro, this thing. How was it for you, first time? No, I, I've been a little like wuss, man. Honestly, yes, yeah, so I drove back from Fassel's house <laughs> to where we're staying. <laughs> Honestly, my wife from the back was like trying to be like an extra ways. She was like, wait, like, you know, ways and then her. Because it was just throwing me off, bro. When I got to near like. Mm. You know those big roundabouts that just, bro, I was saying to Cairo, it looks like something out of a sci-fi movie because yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. on the, not even a roundabout, there was, where there's about hundred yeah, circular things, bro. Stuff. And the building's this big. Yeah. You literally feel like you're going to fall off. Yeah. It literally feels like one of those nightmares you so have. What it is? <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that does when, it. When you played Mario too much yeah, yeah, and you have a nightmare yeah. and I felt like I was in it and with my kids. And so then today, bro, I was like, bro, I'm not going to try. <laughs> <laughs> No, bro, I was like, do you know what? We I, no, 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 it gets worse. I told, I got Cairo <laughs> to Uber it to my hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uber he Ubered yeah, it to the apartment. For like, like, I just need someone with me when I'm driving. So I was like, all right, cool. Oh, like, right, I don't I mind. Bro, I did the same thing. Running, and then he was with me. But on the way here, I was like, bro, we're running late. Let me drive. No, but he gave me some good pointers. Yeah. He gave me some really good rules too, actually. Yeah, like I gave what, him a little like driving what? lessons. Like, no, no, he was saying to follow the, uh, look at the lanes on. <laughs> Stay in the lanes. <laughs> 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 okay. it's like, Stop veering across lanes. <laughs> hey, when he say out loud, it doesn't sound that good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So I was the steering wheel makes yeah. you go. Because actually, in essence, he literally just told me to follow the drive. <laughs> <laughs> he did just tell me to follow the arrows. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it was like counting. <laughs> He's telling me to figure out how. No, many but lanes we are. we have six lanes here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. mm. So that's why I was telling yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. in the middle lane. You, you start going off one way, and then it last minute changes direction. But, um, but what that's do you mean? what. Go, go right. Right. It was like it was like telling me to go like straight for like eight miles, for yeah. example, before I have to take a right. Mm. But then like all of a sudden, it would just change the route. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That kept happening, and that was throwing me off. Well, do you know what you realize, bro? Is that because it is you have to focus a lot and you get headaches because like, I'm focusing so much. Like you got it's all literally your like sat now speaks Arabic. But uh, once you are in it and you've, you're used to it, you prefer these roads so much to the UK roads. These mm. are like American roads, mm. and hey, everything in America is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, it's true. But right. do it, they read my stories. And so, um, but how, how are you finding it now? Because I was the same as you, by the way. So, how Cairo supported you uh, emotionally and physically today, uh, <laughs> Kaya did that for me. So, he drove to my uh, Airbnb that I was staying at, and then I said to he, he he pulled up in his car, like, to take me out. First time I've met him, and I went, 
do you mind if I drive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he was I, was like, yeah, I was right. like, I need someone to sit with me. And then he literally just said, he was like, all right, this lane, this lane, take a ride. <laughs> so, and then, yeah, alhamdulillah. So you, you need someone to sit with you at the first time. You, yeah. you spent all your life, all your driving life, driving one side of the road. And no, then it, it does for you. It is weird though, because you drive so second nature back at home. Yeah, that yeah. is like, the fact you have to think about driving again is everything. Yeah. But here, I think it's, I think it's one, it's the, it's the roads that are different on the side. And I think secondly, it's like the environment, everything's so vast. Yeah. So when you're driving, it just looks like just, so you're trying to almost visually take everything in as well. There's a lot of land. It's true. Yeah. And that's why you should buy property as well, sir. I'm glad you put it out, Faisal. There's no real estate. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. But what, what you say is correct. Like when you get used to it, it's so much more fun to drive here. I when I first yeah. got here, I was nervous. Like yeah. you, yeah. I was like developing anxiety on because I was gonna move here in like January. November it kind of hit me. I've never driven out there. I've got to drive out there. I've got my wife and kid. It's got to be me. It's on me. Mm -hmm. And like I'm nervous. Like I was thinking, I've seen those roads. So what I started doing is like watching YouTube videos of like people people's dash cams. Seventy five million views, or whatever. Just driving down Shakeside Road. Which really. Is like, hour long I watch it I'm like okay okay cool you drive like that <laughs> so I like studying it yeah really but when I got here I was still nervous so I rented a car more the Emirates and um, I just drove it home that, that night but I was sh yeah I was really shaking, man. but I have to lie you get used yeah, to it yeah, you know, I've got a story I, about more I, than I, I might be better going back now hopefully Oh, you can buy by yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you're not gonna make <laughs> Kyra Kyra get an Uber, bro. Yeah. I, you know here, yeah, I don't know what it is, but taxis make me feel sick, bro. Oh, I'm on so the way sorry. to here, but I was feeling. Do you know why? Because I, I appreciate he went through no, that. No, it's the smell <laughs> yeah. in the taxi, man. Really? Like today, I even got one of the new ones, bro. Mm. What? What taxi, taxi are you buying? Getting? I went to the Lexus today because those yeah. ones usually don't smell. But like, I don't know. Sometimes fresh cars. My my hack with taxis here is I book the the Hello one, but the People Carrier one. It's the same price as normal one. Yeah, it's like more, lot more comfortable. There's a single mum out there with three kids yeah. somewhere who's waiting for a taxi in she's in the in the blazing heat <laughs> and there's Kaya <laughs> lying down. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love a bit of space right now. Yeah, but you know what? Stretch my legs out. I, I had the similar situation with Mall of Emirates actually, because I went I, my first drive I drove to Wall one of my first drives I drove to Mall of Emirates and uh, so we got back to the car. It's my first drive, I was nervous, bro. Yeah. Had the kids in the back. The whole family is like yeah, yeah. relying on bro, you. And I, like, I <laughs> no, bro, I'll go back to the car yeah. and I couldn't get the car on because I hadn't driven a, a push yeah, start yeah. car before. So you, it was a keyless car. So I was putting it on and the engine wasn't coming on, it wasn't coming on, it wasn't coming on. And then I realized that you have to like move the steering wheel. <laughs> the first hurdle in yeah, yeah. I can't even turn the car on. I was like, why did they create keyless cars? As bad as this guy one of the toy cars inside the Mall of Emirates. <laughs> oh, it was <laughs> ridiculous. Like, trying to press the button so with angry. a pound coin. Yeah, like, why do they create cars without keys? <laughs> it's key for a reason. <laughs> yeah, the first couple of drives is, is nervy, but now I much prefer it to London. Yeah. Right? I much prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. London is like, you got to wait for the seven cars to come. There's only one lane. Oh, the space-wise, yeah, here, man. It's like, the amount of space, you know, you do, it looks yeah. so different to that. Yeah. I, I, I think in London's like 20 miles per hour now. Oh, oh like, yeah. So start, stop, start, stop. Yeah. I, I actually, you said like, you got to concentrate here. I fall into the other thing where it's like, I'm too relaxed on these roads. I'll get now, to the fast yeah, lane. now. Yeah, I'll get in the fast lane. I'm just like, bro, there's so much space. I can just like take a quick nap or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get, honestly, like, I got to remind myself to like. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but <laughs> have you ever slept in your car? Have any of you guys ever slept in your cars? I'll try to, but it hasn't worked. Bro, I, bro, in Dubai, is it every kind of Dubai, bro? You you put it into, you know, in the, in the UK, yeah, but like, <laughs> in the UK, this is not a country thing. I don't know why I'm quick, but it just happened to be that in the UK, any car that I drove, when you put it back, it goes only goes back so far. These, all of the cars I've driven here, horizontal, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, sleep yeah, yeah. fully. So <laughs> there's been a couple of times I've had to do a school run. <laughs> bro, I'm tired, man. So I, 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 I do that, bro. I, I drive him to school. Yeah. I drive to the mall car park in the shade. I swing that baby back, <laughs> and you ain't seen me for forty minutes. There's been a couple of times. <laughs> My missus thinks I'm working. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There's a couple of times you asked me why I'm so late into the mall. But bro, that's why you're sleeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, nurses because school in here in the UK, what is it? Uh, nine with nine till three, yeah, yeah. Here it's uh, 7 30, 8 a.m. It starts, and oh, so you, have to, oh, so you have to leave really early. It's because of heat, yeah. But people like my neighbor is a teacher, and I hear them <laughs> at like 5 36, bro, going yeah. to their car, really. Yeah. Where they were school huh? <laughs> in London. <laughs> You know when you went to school, 
Mm. Did your parents drop you? What did you walk? How did you get there? How did you get there? <laughs> we did. We know, we we to school? So, so sc- in our, where we lived, the school was here and our house was here. Okay. So we would literally hear the bell. We would literally hear the bell and just go in the train. Yeah. Yeah. No way. No, but, but then, but then, <laughs> but then, no, it was just across the road. But then our high school was like, um, you yeah, had to get coached there. It was like yeah, a whole different. They had like a private coach there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Private yeah, coach. Oh yeah. wow. Hey, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Private coach. Have you heard about What area in London are you guys from? Coach <laughs> yeah, with, yeah. Wow. with, with coaching horses, that type of coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was. It was. It was fun, man. But it was nice, though. It was nice. So I watched a podcast the other day, and they were like, "Yeah, I used to get trained to school," but they mentioned it so casually, and then like everyone on the podcast was like, "What?" Like, that's a very alien concept to get trained to school. <laughs> yeah, that's mad. And also to me, a very alien concept. Have that you, is true, actually. I used to. Um, I can't remember primary school. I went to so many primary schools where I had different journeys for different ones. But oh, yeah. secondary school, I used to walk it. Yeah, it was like a 15 minute walk. 15 no, minutes. Remember knocking for your mates? Yeah. yeah that was the thing. I'm going to knock yeah. for you tomorrow at 3, p- 3 p.m. They usually knock for me. I was like, yeah. I'm knocking for you. Very demanding yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can imagine that being the case. Yeah. I imagine your dad being like, a, I, I don't know what your dad looks like. Do you have met your dad? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I imagine your dad uh, just like, Hench Turkish butter, yeah, <laughs> serious face, and a ring on each knuckle on each hand on each <laughs> finger. He's got, a couple, he's got a ring on there. You answer the door, call you in. Yeah, one knuckle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I met your dad either, even though he was easy. Oh yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I know you should introduce me to your my dad. My dad's elusive, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've introduced people to my dad, and um, I blah not my dad. Yeah, so. but, but I didn't. Yeah, he didn't. <laughs> Everyone else met yeah. him. <laughs> Everyone met him. <laughs> you didn't make the effort. Yeah. Right. Oh man, that's jokes. Oh, that's beautiful, man. I, I love the setup you guys have here as well, man. It's like it's it's, it's like a first of all a complete replica, which is sick. You know, so many people still come to the well when we had the office would come in there and literally would walk in there even with it being empty and be like, oh, this is where. Yeah, you know what I mean, because you would recognize it was still the set. So, well, you say complete replica. If there's one thing I am, it's not creative. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It, yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't this care where I'm in the world. Exactly. This table is 150 like quid, no matter what currency. <laughs> <laughs> you got this one shipped as well, innit? Yeah. No, uh, no, no, no. I actually bought Sorry. this. Oh, you yeah. bought that one. Yeah. 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 Oh, everything um, else I got shipped. Yeah. You were thinking about, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. How? Yeah. Exactly. This is from here. This is from UAE, and uh, I got pretty much I got ripped off because um, I paid uh, really nice about 400 pounds for this. Uh, GBP. Uh, <laughs> no, right, that, how much it cost in the UK? And in China, no, not UK. In China, twenty-five quid. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that was. Can you believe it? It was. <laughs> yeah, that's a business idea for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's fat profit. Make any lights. Uh, no, appreciate what you said about that. But unfortunately, you have to. So people are probably thinking you guys in Dubai but wearing hoodies, and uh, of course, because we're here, um, you have to put the AC on. I feel like I should really cold because tra- I actually was about to come out with a full tracksuit, like extra. Because I thought I might need, like, the way you're going on is like, it's going to be like freezing. It gets really cold, though, No, no, bro. but you're 100% right. I wish I did now. Are you cold? <laughs> uh, no, yeah. my, my legs, I don't know what I'm doing. My legs are I'll tell you what's interesting, bro, <laughs> is that the, do you know, the most uncomfortable thing for me in the world is when somebody is in my house wearing a coat. Anyone <laughs> indoors wearing a coat, it just makes me feel so uncomfortable and unsettled. <laughs> No, in, ge- oh, in general. Dubai, <laughs> de- you know, Dubai, has a the guy's a maniac. Cult, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Dubai, the police. But generally speaking, someone's, house. if someone comes to my house and they, like, it's cold outside and they got cold, they have to take it off. You can't, bro, there's people, I remember in the UK, bro, people would come and sit in the winter and stuff. Like, I don't know, come to see my kids or something. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, cut this whole thing out. <laughs> yeah, like every no, guy listening to like, this is like, "Do I ever wear a coat to Fazal's house?" <laughs> bro, they come in in their coat and they stay in their coat. Yeah, and yeah. Sit yeah. On, they sit on your sofa in their coat. The worst, the best, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you the other perspective. That's me. I'm not even lie. A couple of times I've done it myself, but I forgot to take my coat off. But I haven't said when I'm I'll put your coat here. So I have sat down, <laughs> and after about five seconds, I realised I am boiling hot in this coat. But now you can't say anything. No, That's you how you're meant to do it. You sat down now and they've, they've sat you down. And then you got to stay longer as well. So you got to stay. you got to cook there. <laughs> no, 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 I have yeah. to cook my coat off. It's very hard. To, it's, there's, no, there's no polite way of letting people like, l- p- people know that you just yeah, got to be in and true. out. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. What, is the, what is the social keep acceptable way of doing it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, you got to go somewhere. We're like, oh, look, I, I, I don't want to really be here for too long. Yeah. I just want to pop in, pop out. But there's nothing you can say. People say it's going to be a flying visit. Yeah. It's going to be a flying visit. Just passing by. Yeah, passing by. I got the kids in the car, so I can. Yeah, yeah you got pre, you got yeah, settings got up in advance. Yeah, I you was got visit. Up, yeah. I'm on my way to ha- my home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> from my home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna you know, drive through. Yeah, well, you like you do something like you leave the iron on at home. Yeah, right? you risk it. You say that because you don't want to lie. You say I've left the iron on at home. <laughs> I've left several appliances dangerously on. Yeah, in my living you know, room. You know, you know what works really well though when you go. I got the kids in the car. Yeah, yeah. 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 So how do you? <laughs> 
Yeah. Bring them in. I can't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, got a kids in the car. Yeah. Got a wife in the car. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to come out. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. But generally speaking, I think the best thing to say is I'm not going to stay here long. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to be here. Always the best place, <laughs> nice yeah. to see you. <laughs> I kind of like when um, uh, I people I, I, are rude to me. I like going to people's houses and. And uh, and like seeing uh, like just going to people's houses and uh, I can't remember what I was going with. I had something on my bit. I lost it completely. <laughs> like that John Travolta scene with a coat. My father was just <laughs> walking to people's yards. <laughs> I, I had the weirdest experience. I almost got stage fright as I was saying that sentence. <laughs> Like, uh, people, uh, it's not, I've lost it. I've lost it. It's not every day you see I'm three gone. massive tanks. Yeah, it's true. Like it's true. I mean, I'm intimidated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, no, to be fair, I also enjoy being in people's houses. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I think what I meant there yeah, is, you know, you go, when my missus sometimes like, oh, what do you want to do? Uh, look, it's weekend, off work, got the kids, what do you want to do? And all these, they, they throw all these suggestions out. Should we go to the zoo? Should we go to the park? Yeah. In my head, I think, I should want to go to someone's house. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to go to my True. sister's house right now and just sit on the sofa and let the kids run around. Yeah, I don't know if that's you. lazy or if it's... Uh, no, that's what I like. I know what you mean. The comfort... But it's got to be someone's house that you, like, you know, innit? <laughs> you know, anyone's house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Strangers' house. Yeah. But, like, you can think com- about Dubai is no one knocks their doors. I think <laughs> it's more concerning that when, you, when your family want to spend time with you, you want to go to someone else's house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, to nice. Today, you could. No one locks their door anyway. Yeah, no, you could it's walk true. in. It's true. Have you, have you done any... Visits. Have you seen any houses here? No, no. Yeah, we, we're we're going to do some. Because do some. Um, you know how open houses... Well, not open houses. Do you know how houses work in general? <laughs> <laughs> in general, bro, let's say, for example, a house is listed yeah. on, like, the Zoopla equivalent. Yeah. Um, if it's listed, it's most likely unlocked and you just walk in. Yeah. And I found that really weird. So when I first came here, Shahid, I was looking at his area. And he's like, oh, this house is actually listed. It's like, uh, you can rent this this one. I was like, oh, that's interesting. He goes, do you want to check it out? I was like, yeah, like, call the estate agent or something. Yeah. He was like, no, bro... Oh, but we walked in the house. Yeah. I was like, bro, Sean on. I was like, hello, hello. <laughs> I was like, I felt like I was committing a crime, bro. But yeah, yeah it's so trustworthy. Oh, really? So how do you know which ones you can just bop into? Well, I, to be honest, the estate agent would say, oh, check out Free Zero 6. I, I, did it, I did it once I went to see the apartment and I've, I've messaged him WhatsApp. I was like, yeah, I can do tomorrow at 4 p.m. Can you do that? He's like, yeah, of course I can do that. And I was like, okay, great. I went there at 4 p.m. I was expecting the guy to be like, park up. He's like, just walk in. He ca- I called him up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm here. He goes, okay, yeah, it's, it's apartment 602. I was like, okay. He's just like, yeah, go upstairs. I went to yeah. Stuart Garden. Can I just go up? He's like, yeah. Sure, that would be yeah, that's cool, man. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I like that, man. I, I hear a lot of it, a lot of things like that. There's definitely been a, even just taking the kids out, by the way, these last couple of days, ha, there's definitely an element of just being so much more mentally free. 100%. You know, like I genuinely felt that, you know, like it, whether they're like walking behind or in front of me, because <laughs> I'm miles behind, but like, no. you know, but just like around you, like, okay, cool. Like, you know, there's genuinely a sense of calm. Yes. You know, which I, would, I just don't do. Mm. Like, I never bop, even in a, a supermarket, like kids like, no, you can't. Like, yeah, no, you even can't. a start of the aisle from the veg aisle, you know what I mean? I like, want them right by me, 100%. onion by onion, you yeah. know? But like here, it's, it's, it's beautiful, man. So yeah. it's for that sake, I think even as a parent, it's been lovely. And you can see that in a lot of families, man, like just the the, the vibe and like the kids and like how, how like pleasant it is for them. So I think that that's definitely a large part of like, you know, even us thinking about coming out here as well, man. So yeah. You well, once you guys, once you guys explore like the, the resident side of Dubai, yeah. It's even more safer. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like you're just in the tourist section. Right, do you right, know what I mean? right, right, Which right. is good because no, it's safe no, over there. But imagine if you was like in the res- where the locals was live yes. and people like us, like where we go, bro, it's even much more nice. It, you know, it, like just coming out to the like I said, I went Riyadh last week, and even when I went there, it was just just the smallest things that was such a culture shock because <coughs> you're you're not you're used to that at all. Obviously, you know, back in the UK, and so when you come here, like the the smallest thing you're seeing, like whether it's you know kids out in the evening and like you know riding their bikes around like even earlier on today like you know maybe you know kids maybe like you know our nephew's age with their siblings like by themselves yeah you know just certain things that, is, that, is that is that bad is that no, like, it's good man like good. I, I, we know it's yeah, as well but, but all the time man, it's just so chill like that you know which is lovely it, it's got that you know people say oh we used to when we were kids we used to play outside now it's not safe enough like here it actually is safer mm-hmm. and in my community as well like there's like pack of kids running through like screaming mm. shouting and my initial reaction is like oh why don't scream shout it was like bro it's actually really nice Yes. They, can just, they can run around and yes. get safe and they're literally just like playing yeah. that's how it should be yeah 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 and what you're saying is so true man when yeah. I go back to London because when you get here you get used to it yeah I get used to the fact that my daughter's behind me and I can hear her but I can't see her it's fine or she's running around the uh-huh. shop behind her clothes and whatnot. in London it's like I get this like, bro I cannot do that 
Man. You've got to be watching yes. her. She's got to be in my side the whole time. And when you're in London, you get used to that. So you don't realise how much of a toll is taken on you. When you come here, you realise that, wow, in London, there's like a lot more effort just to like do basic stuff. You, you think know that? what? Speaking of that, I've yeah. got a question. So, a few weeks ago, you went, we were in Riyadh. And then when you went back to London from Riyadh, you sent a text in a sibling chat. You said... Now that I'm back in London, I just want to go back to Riyadh. Mm. Uh, what was that experience like going back after you had visited Riyadh and you kind of like saw it from the vision of like people like living here and stuff like that? Yeah, man. I mean, look, I, I think first of all, look, I haven't, I haven't really traveled anywhere for like a few years now, you know, because we had, a, we had like, you know, two of the kids during COVID and so we're raising them, you know. And so like during that period of time, like I didn't even travel much, you know, we we're so focused on, on the kids and everything. So even first of all, traveling, you know, was lovely. And then like we're, we're going to a place like that as well, which was such a breath of fresh air, man. I think like in terms of the culture, the people, the hospitality, it just felt like, you know, and also by the way, like, yes, you know, we're Muslim. And so being in a place like that too, made such a big impact. And, you know, it, I felt it much bigger because I'm, I wasn't really, you know, not accustomed to any of that, you know, just being in London. So I think that was really nice. Um, but, I think more than that was like the amount of stuff that was for kids to do, like how much is developing, like obviously the people I was around and them, you know, sharing how much, you know, they're investing in that, in that area, uh, where the entire, you know, country and the vision for it. Like it was all compelling to me and especially, you know, we're all like builders, you know, we love to, to, to create and to see things maybe, you know, you know, see things um, that are up and coming. I think, I think, I think, you know, Riyadh is definitely, one of those places, man. Yeah. In the next, like, you know, whether it's 10, 15 years. Um, but I think it was more just the energy, man. Just like the whole thing just felt just so beautiful. And I said a few times, actually, like, it might sound like an over-exaggeration to some people listening, but, you know, I was like, uh, in comparison to London, like, there was some place I was walking around, I was like, it's as if you kind of woken up in Jannah, you know? Like, you're like you was like, bro, this is like, hold on, it feels like Charlie and Chocolate Factory, like everything yeah. you touch, you can eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's so clean. Yes. Yeah, and like, yeah. so with the kids, there's Coco Melon World here, then Blippi World, and then Barbie across the road, and then Nintendo. It's like, how do you, you'd be lucky to get one of these things in one place, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then when I went back, I was like, yeah, there's a reason People the UK has relaxed, yeah, yeah, the UK, like, UK doesn't have Disneyland and all this type of stuff, because it's not like, and as you start to see the Western world in a different way. I tweeted yeah. about that today as well, which was like, you, you can't help but when you come over to the Middle East, see so much of like the infrastructure and the way of thinking and be, forget even the future, just in the way, you know, the governance is um, and the safety is, you know, so many little things are taken care of to, to make it something. Even, even the, for, for example, like in, in, in Riyadh, they were telling me that um, they, they, they invest a lot more in preventative measures in healthcare rather than worrying about people being sick to go to hospital. So for example, they spend more on like the cleanliness in the streets, yeah. in the bathrooms, and <coughs> public places, so people don't get ill in the first place. Cleanliness is just a massive part of the Islamic culture <laughs> yeah, in, in yeah. general, so I think that's like that, seeps through. This is one thing that I've like thought about, yeah, because you know, whenever you mention like Dubai, everyone's like in, in the West, like, oh, there's, there's no culture there. Mm. But actually, there is a mm. lot which people would like overlook. It's like, like, and cleanliness is a big part of it. You go to the malls, cleanliness, like good smells, perfumes. Um, you go to the toilets, yeah. the way there's a yes. the shataf everywhere. Yes. He's all like rooted in Islam, cleanliness and like um, keeping your, your body clean. And yeah, it extends to the streets, it extends to the malls. And like, it's not really tolerated. To be dirty is not tolerated. You go back to London, it's like, the t- dirt is just tolerated. Like, it's just part of- I couldn't of- agree more, man. And, and, and I think this, this you know, we, my wife and I have spoken about that as well. As well, we notice that so much, man. And people's day-to-day behaviors, like we're raised, even like, you know, in our own cultures, you're from Turkish background, right? Mm. You're from uh, Bangladesh you're background. You're Turkish Cypriot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fake Turk. Turkish Cypriot, if but you want to all, specific. Because, because we're from like, you know, Islamic backgrounds, are the principles that are raised in terms of cleanliness, in terms of, you know, small, small things, they are actually small in, in the grand scheme of things. But mm-hmm. like, then when you go to like some places, like it's funny because literally the week after I must go to Westfield and I went to the bathrooms there and I was like, bro, like yeah. this is nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what else it is? Yeah. Like, in the Middle East, yeah, they care about people. So like for entertainment, for leisure, for yeah. families, that like, they're catering for that. As mm-hmm. well as the cleaners. In the UK, they cater just for work. How can we make the train lines faster for you yeah, to get to work? Economy, yeah. Like everything's just work, work, work. So they, like after six o'clock, like everyone knows they go to sleep so you can wake up yeah. for work tomorrow. Here, wow. it's like enjoy your life. Yes, you know what I mean, which is yes. which is the the contrast you see. So when I even me when I go back, I'm like, wow, like this place just 
he just sleeps. That's I don't, so true, man. That's a very good way of looking at it. I, oh I literally, I can't imagine us sitting at like midnight in London doing this. Nah. No, no so, bro, that, that's one thing. Even right? me, like, I should, like you go to coffee shops. I know, but I'd, I'd be falling asleep right now, just being like, oh, it's cold. I'm like in yeah. London. I've got to get, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> get stabbed on the way to your car. It's, oh, it's long, man. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, obviously, we're not trying to completely, you know, gun London in itself because obviously that's home. But still, I think you, you have to be able to appreciate things from objective level. You know, and so when you see things in the Western world, in terms of development, even like the way, you know, we won't go into the politics of it, but like the way certain things are held back or not moving as fast, whether it's education, healthcare, you're like, bro, like sometimes it is just about, you know, doing things a certain type of way. And whatever it is they've got here, however people think of it, whether it's right or wrong, you know, in terms of, you know, the way they run things, it's, it's, it's for the people, like you're saying, Cairo, you know, and they're building it for the future, you know, and it, and it benefits the people as well, man, massively, like, families mm. want to come here, you know, mm. even for, like, entrepreneurship now, but, like, with Riyadh, and that was one thing that was surprising to me as well, is, like, how much they, they want you to, you know, thrive there, they, they, yeah. they, they everyone that you speak to there sees themselves as, like, the kids of, like, Saudi, you know, like in that kind of way that like they want you to grow up and be these entrepreneurs and change makers and they give mm. you the infrastructure by bringing in, you know, WWE, UFC, you know, all these type of things that are coming in there now, like Mike Tyson Boxing Club. It's crazy to see some of these things. They're like, wow, this is like right here in like a city in a Saudi. Right, right. It's just a start. Like you can, like I, I, I feel like I've heard <coughs> that they long, they, they're doing all of this stuff to get attention there. Yeah. So then when they build their own version of whatever's uh -huh. happening, it was going to be out of the park. The Imagine idea. when you could do that. Like, it's literally like there's this like kind of licensing IP right now, yeah. you know, and then over time, it's like, it's like when Apple changed from like the Intel chips to their own M1, right? It's like for the next 20 years, like we'll use Intel chip. At some point, when you've got that much of land and like, you know, capacity to do things, bro, like yeah. whatever it is, you can tell like, you know, like they're doing the football leagues right now, I think it's bound to happen. But they've got enough land. Like, guarantee oh, yeah. they can make their own Disneyland. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah like, guarantee. Yeah, yeah. Easily. Better than yeah. Paris, better than... Yeah. Uh, what's that one? Orlando. Mm. Mm. But, oh, bro, for sure, man. Speaking of Riyadh, um, mm. let's uh, let's talk a bit about... So, I don't know. How, how much can you tell us about... Obviously, you announced the news on your Instagram about uh, Riyadh and uh, opening up an office there for free source and stuff. What's the deal? Okay. Man, look, this this was actually one of those, I'll be as candid as I can about it because actually the story of it is... is are you going to give us the PR version or are you going to give us... No, 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 no. I'll never give you... Never know PR version. Lads version. All right, guys. Gold. Think gold. Diamonds. Got it all. I don't know how to tell those PR stories of like things, you know, like how do people even do that? There's, um, this was, no, no, it was, it was crazy, man. One of our, one of our good friends, uh, Motez, has been, been out there quite a bit. These guys run a great agency in the UK. And he's been going back to Riyadh, like, you know, like maybe he went like three times in like a month or something last month. I said, bro, why do you keep going back? Like, what's going on here? And the second time he went, he called me and he goes, bro, I just met these people here. They love what you're doing. Can you come out here tomorrow? And wow. I just put the kids to bed. It was 8 p.m. I was like, bro. And by, this, by the way, before this, when he went before, he came back. He was like, bro, you got to go. He goes, come with me. Next time I go, just come with me. And I was like, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, and then... um. He called me to come out tomorrow. I was like, bro, I can't. I've got the kids. This or the other. And he was like, all right, cool. What do I do? I said, let me, let me find out more. Let me jump on a call with these guys. You know, because no when you get calls like that, you're like, bro, what's, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so then I had a call with these, the, the, this gentleman out there um, and they're building something incredible. I don't know how much I can share about what they're building right now. But, there we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just trying to draw our eyes, cross our teeth. It's a bit of yeah. work. Yeah. But at the end of the <laughs> day, look, it is what it is. <laughs> 2024. Yeah. There will uh, be an announcement in Q2 yeah, watch out. or three. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but, but they've brought but, some great investors on board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're really thrilled to be joined yeah. by some of the best partners. In it. Now, these yeah. guys, are, it's called Amplifador. Uh, they're building a, a, a really cool platform. And, and basically, the guys behind this have, have done some really powerful things out in, in, in Saudi Arabia. And so we had one call. It was 30 minutes. And I literally like, went upstairs and my wife had just woken up for a nap. And I was like, babe, listen, I've got to go to Riyadh. You know, <laughs> like she was like, what? And she, I was like, no, no, hear me out. And then like, but bless her, man. Literally, she's like kind of half waking up. She's like, okay, yeah, I mean, all right. And then uh, she was game with it. And then like, it's so funny because downstairs actually were, so I created director Samir and uh, Nate, they'd be, they'd be doing a shoot and they'd, they'd come to my house to go over a few things. And they were sitting downstairs and Sam was like, bro, man, you're like you're gonna be able to go out there. And then like, you know, I know you want to go to Dubai as well after this was this, this trip. Like maybe just team up together. Like it's gonna be like all of us were like bricking it, thinking like I don't even know if I can like get away with going like Saudi and I'm gonna go to Dubai. Like how are we gonna do this? 
And then literally, I just spoke to my wife, she said, yeah, cool, just go. So bless her, man. And I, I came out, bro, and, and as soon as I sat with these guys, you were there that first time I met them, right? Yeah. Um, it was just a testament to, you know, the vision that they have out there, how much belief they have in the talent that we have, you know, in London, what we're building. And really, it's interesting for me because sometimes I get a little bit mad inside because where we've grown up, bro, look, we've, grow, we've all grown up in like London, regular, you know, council estates and, you know, places where if there's, we believe like we're talented, you know, we believe we have a lot to offer and we're clearly doing it in like other parts of the world now. But the fact that we can't get that level of like cosign from where we're from, we're like, bro, we, we were raised on like government housing and and you know welfare and school meals and like that's what we all came from bro like and I, so the, I, I also you know what i mean that there's it's a perception thing in some ways because <coughs> you smashed in london as well like spirit of london awards like downing street and stuff like that but i think <clears throat> when you live in london and then you go out whether it's for university or you visit other towns and cities you go oh well, like people have a bit of a small town mindset whereas in london people are actually building businesses people are making moves and i think when you do that it feels good and you think okay like we're, we're doing things and then when you then go to somewhere across the world then you go oh now this is the step up so i think like every place has its no, time i know time. but you got, i think you have to look at things completely from an objective point of view meaning like if you're thinking about things from a growth point of view for a country as well and for an ecosystem like why should people that are clearly able to build you know organizations and have talent to do things on a global level that's all of our ambitions you know they should be benefiting from it. if you think about it like these are kids that you've invested into through your own public funding you know who have now grown up and been like yeah like we can't get any like it's hard to raise vc capital there it's hard to get like the right up you're, you're blocked out from a lot of things it's, it's sometimes harder from like, you know being a certain racial background as well yeah. you know these aren't necessarily because we again like you said we've done we, i'm sure we could continue to do more but there's nothing to entice you as much and so i felt that a lot with what we're trying to do and so it's <laughs> just your face i think you're gonna say something <laughs> It's always got something. It's that video Rishi Sunak when he goes, um, you know, I have all types of friends. I have friends that are... Barristers. I have friends that are barristers. What are you saying? He goes, I've got some working class friends. Uh, well, not working class, but... <laughs> oh my God. He's so unbelievable. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's unbelievable, brother. Bro, but I literally... I literally rule out from granted. Let's not go into politics. Yeah, I want to say something. Yeah. With regards to... Oh, I've lost it again, bro. Oh, no, it's the house nah, all over again. And it was sick, yeah. <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm running for prime minister. So. <laughs> That's such a sick point. Yeah. Uh, no, I've lost it. It was about the real move. Oh, yeah, yeah people. So yeah. I went with Omar to meet these people for the first time. And uh, it's, what, it's kind of what I do in life, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like... I'm, it's because of you he cleaves the deal, yeah, is it? Yeah. 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 I don't want to say anything. Like, when Omar's making, like like, when when making big moves... I'm his little brother and I'm tagging along. And we know, so we went to this really nice dinner. No, it was a pleasure, man. It was, it, no, you know what? Like, I think it's so important to have you out, especially with what's happening in the Middle East as well in general. I think like with what you guys are doing, I think Saudi is huge for even, you know, stuff that you got going on as well. Yeah, and so it was really nice to be to ourselves together. But the, the, my point was that the guys are lovely. Yeah, guys are really great, nice man. Great. Like, yeah, yeah. You get, you get instant vibe. Um, yeah. from people let, let, me sure. let me teach you guys about a person bro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, 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 you but you, from people yeah and man really quickly like, that guy was just like all of them but like uh, one of the main guys the, the two brothers and um, we were looking in the mirror yeah. <laughs> the two brothers and, and bro, they were just like so genuine so sincere and you catch it straight away, isn't it? You get a vibe for someone. And so I think... Yeah, I think... I think good people. Definitely, man. And I think, you know, the way they host you and take care of you. And also, you know, again, I, I really believe in, in business. The best things that happen are when we're, where, you know, people aren't looking at their incentives alone. They're looking at aligning incentives. Yeah. And I think, like, we speak a lot of that language, the way we do business, by the way, in London, like, specifically. But we don't see a lot of that in the culture in general, in the way business is done in that side of the world. Personally, I haven't seen that as much. But then as soon as I came here, it's like everyone thinks that way. As, lot, as, as far as I've been able to uh, encounter, you know, like thinking about things from a level, of, okay, what, do you, what are you looking for? What do you want to achieve? So you mean like and service? It's like, how can, you, how can I support you where you want to go? You know, how can you support us and where we want to go? And it's open, like we all want to go to some direction. Mm -hmm. My passion is not going to be their passion specifically and vice versa, but we can align somewhere and find common grounds and then grow together in some way. And they do that very well. And I think there's an open-mindedness to that and a willingness to want to like, okay, cool. Like let's, let's jump onto this, like make two rockets, like even a bigger rocket. And so that's lovely, man. I think that type of 
uh, that's something that I think I've been seeking and looking for as we're trying to expand. But definitely, as we came out here, man, it just made sense. And then following that, man, their team is great. You know, I think they're very serious about what they do. I think the way they conducted themselves business-wise, conversations-wise, you know, I think shows a lot of maturity about, you know, the way they handle things. So I think there's a lot of things for me that made a lot of sense. And, and also, by the way, before this, like just to preface it, I think, you know, Allah's timing here plays a such a key role because we've been talking about, look, let's maybe go out to the Middle East. You know, the plan was just come out here and do what we're doing anyway, but just like do it by ourselves. <coughs> but to be able to do it with, you know, people who have already seasoned, understand this industry, and also really be able to take this vision to where we want to get it to. You know, we want to make this a global company. I think, you know, as soon as we've been out there, the focus, you know, instead of focusing on simply USA, Europe, it's like, you know, Japan, Indonesia, China, you know, Saudi, Dubai, India, you know, these are great thriving regions that you don't really hear of much, by the way, like when we're doing business, we don't know we're talking about, we just go America. Yeah. And it's really refreshing. And when yes. you come here, you're like, man, now we want to localize the business in all these regions. I'm very excited to do that. So I think from an ambition and challenge point of view, I think that speaks to all the things that I'm looking for now, which is I do want to run a global company and I also want to do it in a very, you know, uh, do it with something I'm very passionate about, you know? Yeah, yeah. I just like to piggyback off what you guys are saying. Like, I hear this a lot from people who are not even, um, they're not even Muslims and stuff, but they come here and they realize there's a very different culture and a very, and when it, when it comes to business specifically, this part of the world seems to be attracting, like you said, builders, and people like that, they're trying to collaborate anyway by default. So you mm -hmm. come here and it's like, you find people who are also building something. Like you said, it's like, oh, how can we like, work together? When I was in London, it didn't even really cross my mind to go and find like a co-founder or find some of a project and maybe trying to help them with that project. Mm -hmm. When I moved here, it was like, oh, this guy's doing a project, that guy's doing something, this guy's a podcast, this guy's doing this platform, real estate. You just like, there's so many people doing stuff around you. It's like, you almost have to, you must inevitably fall into mm -hmm. one project or two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so bro. it's a very um, and it's a very welcoming vibe. Like people are not secretive about what they're doing. In London, I get the feel it's like, no, no, I'm working this and like we, I'm competing with everybody, and I've, it's got to be me doing something. Whereas here, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm working on this, and it'd be great if I could get some help or advice. Well, it's basically, in, in, in enough room for everyone, you know. Yeah. So literally, everyone can thrive. I think maybe being on a on, on an island in in the UK it might feel like that as well, which that is there's a scarce amount yeah. of space. Yeah. But and and I think what, sorry, I think what you said also is in, interesting because. When people in the UK go global, they just think about Europe and US. Yes. Like, oh, that's the what they yeah. don't even think about Middle East, yeah. North yeah. Africa, yeah, and this They don't think it's not even on the radar. Mm. But when you come here, it's like, bro, this is like, it's even a bigger opportunity. Forget mm. like that, that that ecosystem. Again, we're not going to get political, but it's definitely perhaps in its peak. And here it's like you can see the peak on the horizon type of thing. You can sort of spot the trend. And if you feel that in the air here with, with people, whether they're like Muslims who have moved here for like a more Islamic life, or they're just they're from themselves from the UK or from Europe, and they've just seen the opportunity, there's this buzz in the air of like something's building here, mm -hmm. and you don't really get that in London anymore. That thing of opportunity that you're mentioning, I saw that the most with Cairo when we first moved here and stuff. It's like every other, I was still trying to get my feet like on the ground here and every other conversation with Kyrie would be like, oh, bro, yeah, I'm just doing a shooting gap. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was connecting with these guys. I was like, wow, it really is a social, mm. you can really connect with people where it feels a bit colder, maybe like otherwise, but it's, it's very, it's a very like sociable, here, business, professional, social kind of space. Yeah, because here like, bro, all you got to do is just meet someone and that someone might know someone else that yeah. might need your service. Whereas in the UK, I feel like it's very like, I, like it should be mine like why mm. why am i gonna give pass you on to this person etc that kind of vibe because everyone's scared like they might lose business and, yeah and it's so hard to grow up here it's like the first person that i met uh we had we was like she has a son and i was like hey i'd love to use your son for a shoot happened to be her the she works for gap and then through there she oh, loved really? the shoot she took us in we worked with gap and that's like, a sick man the thing you're yeah, good at though bro is you're good at doing a lot of work you're good at looking at long term vision and doing a lot of work for like, oh, let me just, you, you're, you're not, uh, you don't have that arrogance. You're like, oh, there's a shoot going on. Let me just jump in on the shoot, even though it's not work. Yeah. And I'm taking out a day of my time free of charge and just go roll and just. But that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm saying though. Like that, that is kind of the culture I've seen here where it's like people do stuff that is not necessarily going to benefit me today. But again, obviously I'm not saying you did it like selflessly. That was a good business move. 
But you see more of that where it's like, I'm going to do stuff. Whereas in, in the West, you f sometimes you'll hear the question, should I intern for free? No, don't ever intern for free. You deserve yeah, to be yeah, paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, you need to like crazy, put, so you need it's to give crazy. value and stuff. I think, I think it also comes from a place that when you have a level of confidence in, in what you do and who you are, you know, you, you understand that, look, that's a resource that A, can be offered and shared, but also there's always space for learning and growing. Yeah. And so by putting yourself in environments, you should always be doing it every day, no matter what level you're at. You should constantly be in environments that don't pay you it directly in the short term, mm. but like they'll pay you in other ways that you can't necessarily measure today. You know, and there's a, there's a quote on that, which is like you, there's, there's um, some things that uh, can... Some things oh, you great quote. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there's, hum, there's some, some houses some you can be in. <laughs> no, but some things that you can count can't be measured and something that can be measured you can't count. Something along, along those lines. But effectively saying that like all the things that you can count, like data, for example... Uh, don't count, you know, but all the things that, uh, some of the things that count can't be measured, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, you can't see some of the things that's, that actually uh, matter. That's Airbnb. That's right, yeah, yeah, he said it, yeah, I just What's completely butchered it though, uh, uh, Brian Chesky. Yeah, Brian Chesky. Yeah, but it's a lovely quote, really man, and, and, yeah, and I think it's really it's important to remember that. that, because we, we only ever look at the things that actually we can physically see in front of us, like, oh, what's this going to, uh, and by the way, I hear that so much, man, when I'm even trying to share opportunities and help people come into situations, and when it's an immediate and money conversation yeah. or like just that, I'm like, I understand. We all know that. Like it's yeah. going to have to transpire. However, you you're, you got to look at value in loads of different ways, you know, and then you got to also be able to look at it very objectively as well. Like you can't look at it from a lens of like what I deserve right now or who are now, bro. Mm. You got to look at it from a level of, you know, where am I right now? And what would this, doing this, like what's the true cost of it? If mm. the cost of it is like, three hours of my time, four hours of my time, or like, or maybe even two, three days of it, time, whatever it is. Like when I came out here, even when I came to Riyadh last week, bro, there was, I came out for one meeting, yeah. you know, and I had to, I've got kids and family and everything. And I was like, yo, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go for four days. I'm only going for one meeting. I don't know what's happening, mm. but there's Baraka in it, you know, like we went with the flow. There's no expectations. And then it's like, I'm that, then it's like amazing. Like, cause you can really allow yourself to appreciate what comes for it because Wherever it is, it is, you know, yeah. and you just move with that. I think that there definitely needs to be open mindedness to that. So, that saying. quote originates from uh, Albert Einstein, that oh, well, was yeah. Brian Chesky quotes. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Albert Einstein. And he says, yeah. uh, but it is Brian Chesky who quotes yeah. it. And he says, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. That's it, yeah. But I think it's very important, man. I think, Albert I mean, Einstein. Yeah. Well, e equals MC squared. Yeah. <laughs> What's crazy? Like, recently. Just put it the end. E equals MC squared. These guys are just dropping bars for like, breakfast. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is hilarious, bro. <laughs> That's why he got crazy, man. <laughs> man, even E equals MC squared. <laughs> That's funny. You like, know what? You know, but you, you know, you, you guys probably watched the David Beckham documentary, right? Oh yeah, every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you definitely watched it. You watched it. You, I know you watched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I watched it. I watched it. Yeah, and you no, know, but you, you know, don't you remember growing up when you'd see David Beckham being like the first type of celebrity that would go like global, right? Yeah. yeah. Like really, like you, or Michael Jackson, maybe, or whatever. Yeah. But like, you see it on global level. Like I remember, like when you'd see him and like people in Japan going, and you see, yeah. you saw the shots again on the documentary. But it made you think. I get to a point you're just saying about like UK, USA, like people just focusing on that. Mm. They're like, actually, there is such a big world out there, yeah, and so yeah. much ground to cover, you know. Yeah. And so, no matter what you're doing, I think like th that's actually very smart of him, by the way. Like when you even saw that, to to realize that no, there's a big world. I'm yeah. gonna build a brand that's global. You know, and I think so many people can do that today. What I noticed about Dave Beckham though was that that's a star who we watched in our childhood growing up, who like transcended like countries, but just like, guys like one of the most famous guys on the planet all around the world. And what you notice is that in now in the documentary, he, you, you must keep yourself sane by keeping your bubble very small and not letting the fact that the whole world knows who you are get to you. Like the fact that the guy was just like cooking in his kitchen, he likes like focusing on like, make sure everything is done perfectly. Yeah. He likes to sit in his garden, you know, watch his house. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but it, it does go to show that you, um, you can't think about how many people know me, what number, you've got to focus on your thing. And I think the successful people focus on their thing and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't let all the outside world like, get, get Bro, to not, What's you, that quote about if you, if, uh, like- If you measure MC squared, yeah. <laughs> no, if, the, if the water in a boat, if the water gets inside the boat, the boat sinks, 
And yeah, if the, if the boat's on top of the water, it stays on something like that. Yeah. 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 Great quote. <laughs> Go, <laughs> Cara? Go, Cara. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I was gonna say yeah, like bro. Even um, recently, I've been I've been thinking about this thing, yeah. Where like, whenever we start a business, right, or like a project, the first people we kind of advertise to is our family and friends. Mm -hmm. When in hindsight, they're not even our audience or our mm -hmm. customer base. And I feel like what 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 yeah, what, what what David Beckham done, for example, like if if we if we can find if we can figure out early on who our audience is even create a separate account and not even tell no one about it and just target your audience mm -hmm. i feel like that success will be mm -hmm. more impactful than having friends and family because then you start to think about like what do my friends think what do my family about the think? mom test no yeah that's a it's a concept a cream actually shared that with me when we were doing some stuff at food source and it was basically like yeah like it's like going to your mom with something and she's not going to want to tell you like, her real thoughts because she's not going to break your heart. Mm. She's also going to want you to feel confident and ambitious. Then similar to that, you know, like the friends and family thing is so same. It's like, you know, when people do things, whether it's a pyramid scheme, whatever, it's very difficult to like, you know, be able to figure that out, whether it's something that genuinely works or not on a, on a market level. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And like you get hit with that, that fear of like, what is my friends going to say? What is my family going to say? Mm -hmm. Because like they're not even your audience, but you're, that's where your most of your concern is. So it's like, it's hard to like, to take yourself out if you started with your friends and family i think like if you're gonna start something target your audience from mm -hmm. the start that's a very good point I mean? yeah for sure bro even when i'm like c c filming a reel or something i find it so much easier i, I almost get nervous if i know there's people in the house and they can hear me filming real mm. but i know that thousands of people are going to watch yeah and, like, guys we're talking thousands yeah <laughs> <laughs> people are going to watch those, those reels but that's and then my family's gonna see it inevitably but you almost get like a bit nervous and shy i know it's yeah. a completely different concept no it's not because it's, it's true like do you find yourself whispering a little bit when your family in the house not whispering but a bit more quiet well on, on camera yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah that's my issue as well, well i thought you were just generally <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's normal though isn't it because yeah there's a lot that goes into into a reel there's a lot of like outtake and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. you feel conscious of it yeah the other thing about the david beckham thing is it, what i find interesting is that you have to accept failure do, do any of you remember when he done the deal with adidas he created that logo of him doing a free kick and it was basically trying to be like the next jordan do you remember that bro they had a big yeah, launch yeah, 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 and it just yeah, flopped yeah. yeah i remember that but i kind of admire that yeah, that blue shoe the blue shoe yeah yeah it was, the logo was just I how Jordan's logo was. I do remember dark. that. I do yeah. remember that. I don't remember they it. They even put that in the documentary because it's a failure. Oh, but yeah. they should have done. That. They yeah. should have. Yeah. I kind of respect that you would try and dream so big. Yeah. And fall so. Why did it fail? It did, I, I, I don't remember it, but I could just like just it just. But I think it was because it's Adidas. I think that's why. It felt. Do you think so? I don't think Adidas has that community like Nike does. I think uh, it just sounds. I, I didn't even realize it's a thing, but it just sounds like literally trying to copy the Jordan thing. It's like it's always it's, it's got element yeah. of cringe to it from the very get go, man. Like, kind of. And also, the, the, the Jordan thing happened by accident. Yeah. And so when you try and recreate that intentionally, exactly. would it happen? Because no. what is the Jordan story like? The Jordan Air. I haven't watched Air. You haven't watched Air? No, I haven't watched Air. But I know the story. You I know the Jordan story. I haven't watched yeah. Air. Huh? It was really his mum that was like a key part of it because she Who's basically. Mom? Uh, Michael Jordan's okay. mom because she basically negotiated they wanted to sign him or something along those lines and she basically negotiated that he gets like royalties yeah, right? and she said yeah. like, you can do it but so long as he gets royalty of sales long, yeah. you know it's just and even the way he obviously carries himself there I think dude, when you see brands like that whether it's Michael Jordan you know, some of these people who have like, managed to be so successful right now but also keep such a level like a decorum about them you know what I mean a way of moving a way of like you know there's an elusiveness to it but it's also just it comes from a very uh, sincere place as well of like you know how they see the world you know there's a reason behind it it's not like from a place of arrogance you, you know, know I actually respect I, I, that I a lot I think you're touching on a quite beneficial point here which is with Michael Jordan and I think we're at Prince Nassim and other people like that there's as much as people want to like hear from them and stuff the fact that they're so um, scarce in how much they show themselves how much camera time they give how much interviews they give it actually increases their uh, th there's beauty in like just stepping away from it all yeah. like, like, silence 100 yeah. isn't it there are, there's a few celebrities who kind of ruined their like the veneer yes. of they're it ruined, like, they're, yeah, they're, they're on every yes. show it's like alright yeah. yeah so yeah there's a, Bro, there's a it happened, and you know what we see it now because we grew up with some people that we would have seen and be like that's so cool. And then like, now you've grown up, you're like, oh. Mm. You see it too much. Yeah. Like but everywhere. I think it comes from a level of self-awareness. I think also shows a lot about decision making over time. Mm. And by the end of the day, look, like when social media's come in and like, bro, like it's also been highly beneficial for a lot of celebrities, yeah. a lot of big people, you know? So yeah. that's going to be a tough decision to figure out as well. Like what do, how you in do I go? So. Mo and Ali is the same. Yeah. When we got the Mo and Ali interview, he was like, I don't do it. I never do interviews. 
I was like, why mm. did you choose to do us? He was like, I don't know, man. I just got a feeling like, you know, you hit me up and I said, I'll do it and I stick to my word. And that's beautiful, man. But he never, you, he doesn't do interviews. Like when he had Instagram, he hasn't had Instagram for like the longest amount of years. And then now I think he's got it again. But when I asked him about his Instagram as well, he's like, someone like set it up for me and like, they just like put it all through. He just, he goes, I just like to be at home, my family, my kids. I play cricket with my kids and stuff. Yeah. So I in the community. And I was like, do you know what? I rate that. Man. It can't mm-hmm. be easy for having that level of fame. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you guys that like won multiple World Cups <laughs> yeah. in this country. You know? but I don't think it's even fame. Like, social media makes it so accessible that anybody can have so many eyes on them. Like, look at you guys, do you know what I mean, for example. But, like, I guess the question will be, like, how much of your life do you decide to share? Mm-hmm. And how much of it, like, yeah. do you hold back? Because, like, you... I know with, I know, sorry, bro. No, no. But, like, I know, even with you as well, like, I hear, like, I see your, like, you have, like, a private story for your friends. Yeah, yeah. That you will post, like, pri- like, f- like, private stuff. But with you two. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Just for friends. <laughs> but, like, for you two, like, you guys share, like, all your, like, everything that's happening in, in real time. But and, that's like, a crazy thing. I you share don't. less now. Yeah, yeah it looks like, like that. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's what's that's a crazy thing. Because I have that conversation with so many people as well, which is, like, they, they feel they see it, like, so much. But, like, that's such a small percent. I was just uh, uh, speaking to someone the other day as well, and I said the same thing. I was like, there's actually so, like, you know, so much more that's actually really going on that anyone knows about, you know? Like, so, even so much of, like, business, like, so. you, yeah? I would hope so. No, but for, <laughs> no, but for example, like, even, like, you, you would think that so much of my association is just with feed source. You know what I mean? And yet you don't understand that that business has, I've had to do that for over four years while I've had children and also invest into it before taking out for a long period of time, you know, and only now we're starting to get to that point that like it can pay its dividend, uh, pay its dues. You know, that takes a long time. And so in between the, that time, you have to operate in many other ways. You have to find revenue streams. You have to do a lot of different things to figure things out. All of that is what no one sees. You know, because I actually think like, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, we do, and I even know you guys do as well, you have to keep in a certain bucket because, you know, it, it also is too much for like everyone to know everything, you yeah. know, like where every dollar is coming from, everything you're associated to, like, you and you got use social media in a smart way, which is like, sometimes it is a story to tell, like, what one big part of what we're sharing is the journey, you know, and, and the place it's always come from that I have to often check in with anytime, like your ego gets involved or something, because it happens to all of us. You got to check in and be like, okay, why am I doing this? And when I really take it back, it's for all of us, man. Like people like us who would grow up and we wouldn't see anyone like us. And we speak about this all the time. It's why you create this podcast. It's the same reason why we share stuff on social media because people like us, we don't see other people like us go- going to Dubai, doing things, set up podcasts, set up companies, you know, taking them into different countries. Like we don't see any of that to us find aspiration and inspiration, you know? And so I think it's a duty upon us to share it, but it's a very tough balance to find, bro, for sure, of like, how do you share it in a way which you don't sound like you're bragging, yeah. don't sound like you're overdoing it, like, but you really want everyone else or at least people that are interested to see it in a way like, yo, like, people that look like us, you know, we didn't used to see that. So like, we got to share that. I you think know, part of it is you have to be <clears throat> that person. You have to truly be that person. So you have mm. to truly try and have excellence. Mm. And when excellence, re- excellence really matters when the cameras are off, mm-hmm. when you're having conversations with people who perhaps they can't benefit mm-hmm. you. And then the true reward for me anyway, is if somebody says to me that other people spoke well of me, that really for me is so much more important than people online thinking good of me because they see me at my uh, best or like me trying to be my best. Whereas if someone else, oh, like I someone said to me the other day on the phone, like I've met, I, I spoke to him for the first time, I, we don't know each other but like kind of work in similar industries and stuff like that and we spoke on the phone and he goes but by the way like everyone I've spoken to like about you like you sometimes comes up a conversation like, they've spoken like very highly of you and stuff and I was like that's that's like the biggest compliment that somebody could, mm-hmm. could give because that means that that's like that's truly uh, who you are with people relationships and I think everyone does speak like that about probably, you by the way no, that's really kind of and, and I know the reality of myself which is very bad <laughs> but <laughs> the, the, really and truly I think the most important thing um, like outside of Dean I think the most important thing in life is your relationships oh, yeah. I think you've got to protect and guard your relationships with, with, with just like so much like no quick win whether it's money whether it's um, whatever kind of success uh, you can measure is worth damaging relationship and relationships get damaged because that's life so you will go through times where you're damaged you make a mistake you make a hiccup or you 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 do take the wrong decision sometimes which is normal but generally speaking overall 
grows, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you, 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 you choose relationships mm -hmm. over those quick wins. And that's so important. But that's also very tough because very tough. the way life works, things are dangled in front of you all the time. Even in relationships, like you, can, you have to be conscious of why you have certain relationships and yeah. it's not for ulterior motives. Yeah. You know, because you see that many a time. And if you also, by the way, are so insecure because you've been burned by other people before, you're going to affect the future relationships you have, yeah. but not letting people in. So you've got to definitely toe that line of like, hopefully having, you know, decent enough interaction with people that you feel comfortable in opening yourself up to people, allowing people to see that beautiful side to you. Because if we actually, I think, and you guys probably agree that the best relationships you have are with people who allow you to see the most vulnerable, beautiful sides to them. That's true. And that you yeah. share to them. You know, like, like, like the energy in this room, for example, man. It's like everyone's the most authentic version of themselves. And like, if we can all find that place, and in some parts of the world, like, by the way, again, come back to whole London, UK thing, a lot of times there is that, whether it's like an insecurity thing about you know, taking what's mine or whatever it comes from, I don't know. But there is an element of like, you're going to see a version of me that I decide to show to you, yeah. you know, which so all of us have to have to a certain degree. But it's really pleasant, man, when you have a relationship with people that is like the truest forms themselves. And also, by the way, you protecting that for them, understanding that it's such a gift to be given that. Like yes. someone gives you that, like, of them, you know, to look after, like this is my true self, I'm being vulnerable, I'm being honest. You have to protect that, you can't back, back about them, you can't like disrespect them, you know, you have to really cherish what that means, man, because it's important. I think also <laughs> what adds to it, sorry guys, is, no. um, I feel like I just keep taking this back, like, serious. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm enjoying it, I'm honestly enjoying no, this a lot. Really. This is just my vibe. Oh, <laughs> this is a vibration. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm conscious of your time, so we'll close it up soon, but uh, this reminds me of a piece of advice. I, I think I, I either mentioned this on a podcast recently, or, I, or I, when I was giving, I was, like, lecturing my little sister, I told it to her, I think, I think the latter. But an amazing piece of advice relating exactly to this. Uh, Isa, who um, we've interviewed before on the podcast, Isa Khan, he was telling me that him and Hamza Zortis went on a speaking, uh, like a, a, a speaking event, right? Where they teach you how to be excellent in speaking. By the way, Hamza Zortis, like yes. one of the yeah. best speakers. And he's exactly. going to, there's a lesson in that in itself. The fact that he's going to educate himself and choosing to go to a Toastmasters or something yeah. like that. I was like, That's, that in itself is incredible. It just shows his humility. But anyway, he told me a really good lesson. He said, one lesson that we learned from there that we now try and teach in our companies is, they taught us that, um, when people speak, there's an art in listening to them for the words that they actually say and just the words that they say, not interpreting their words and trying to build an narrative in your head. So if someone says something to you, you think, oh, they mean this. No, he said the art of listening is someone says, and you trust that what they're saying, the words that they're saying are the exact words that they mean. And he said, if you think about it, that's actually a very difficult thing to do. And that's really good. So uh, that inspired me a lot. So now when I listen to people, I try and listen to them and Sometimes my head goes, oh, I'm maybe saying this because of this. And I go, no, no. If he's saying that, trust that he's saying it for that mm -hmm. reason. You always have a, you can always like, and I think that's, I, I, I do think, not to be sexist, but I do think that in some cases, men are, men have this thing where you can be a bit more direct with each other. Like I've, I can sometimes say something to Kaya and not worry about, oh, I might come across harsh. I know the Kaya could do the same to me. And like, all you guys are like, yo, bro, like, even the text I sent you guys just now, like I said that AC is gonna be on some big hoodies. I could have been like, oh, like, guys, uh, when you come, like, just just a note, like, have, I was like, yo, bring a hoodie. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We'll be cold yeah, hoodies. Yeah. Yeah, we'll and um, I think there's an element of, when you can trust each other in a relationship, you can be more direct and stuff like that and not build narratives around. Like, I'm not saying all women are not like that. Obviously, people are, are, are great at that. Women are great. Someone help me there. <laughs> <laughs> women are great. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole time last week you're talking, first of all, before that, you were saying, take people for the words they say. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, okay. Yeah. What do you and mean by this? And then in my mind, I'm like, okay, let me try to spin this for him. <laughs> no, but sometimes, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do get from, from a, but that's also, again, to preface that, by the way, so many of your interactions are probably more with males than they are with females as yeah. well. So like, yeah. But, but apart from that, but I 100% agree, man. Like, you know, whatever you can find, like ways to but trust that, people's have communication. Have you seen that, that meme yeah. online? That's like, um, there's a meme online that's like, a uh, 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 is it captioned by like, this is like a woman talking about her husband, yeah. And it's, she's like, I can't believe like, this is a good night out for guys. And it's her husband and three other guys, they're all sitting on the floor. They've got a pizza box each on their lap and they're just watching the football. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, that is, that's like, that's, that's, that's a good evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a bit of football, a bit of pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Man.
What are you guys up to right now, man? What are you doing? What's the, what's the... Um, I'm going to do a few different things, aren't I? You heard of properties? Yeah. I sell them. <laughs> You're trying to buy a property in <laughs> He did tell me though, he's the fastest said to me as well, he goes, the winning comes properties, speak to you. So. Yeah, I said, speed I said, the the winning properties, speak to Frank Hyder. <laughs> speak to Faisal. Just um, to you, we did a few things, something like, like, I've been, as you know, we met 2018. Yeah, Was great. it? Wait. It's the first time we met since then. Was it Kibeli? Yeah. Yes. Really? That was yeah. really, that's so funny, man. Oh, typical Turkish. You took me to that place. I did take you. In fact, when you took me to that place, you said oh, I had a meeting here recently. It was really nice. That was with this guy. No way. All right. Now mm. let's come out. I'll tell the story, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Because the story's story. funny for me, anyway. Oh, what? You guys met before? Yeah. Oh, 20... my God. I've met before. Yeah. I've heard this story a thousand yeah. times. I'm going to say it. I, don't remember, I don't remember much about the I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. It's yeah? a good story. Because I, I messed up the meeting with my mom, right? <laughs> we're meeting. You said to me, 8 a.m., be here, whatever, whatever, right? I got there, and it's something happening on your train. I think there was like someone. There was an incident on your train okay. where like, you were delayed about 40 minutes, something like that. Right, right, right. right. You messaged me, you said something happened, yeah. 40 minutes. I was like, cool. So I got my laptop out because I was waiting for you. I got my laptop out and started doing work. Yeah. Back then, and even still, I'm quite intro- uh, kind of introverted. I wasn't really used to like meeting up people. When I'm from Dubai, I started meeting up more people. Back in London, I was like in my room just like working. So I've got, I've got into work mode now in this, in this coffee shop or whatever it is, a breakfast place, right? And I've kind of zoned out. I forgot that Omar's coming and we're going to meet and chill and talk. <laughs> so I'm just like in work mode now. And he's walked in. I'm like, oh snap. So I tried to say something witty, yeah? Like, when I'm nervous, I tried to be funny. What did you say? Yeah, then? I said to you, what did I say, man? Sorry. I said to you, all right. Because bear in mind, he's 40 minutes late, 45 minutes late, my spread, right? Okay, he's doing, did you get here all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was such a like it was such like a passive aggressive comment, oh, no. but I was trying I to be remember. funny. They like, come out of passive aggressive. I have beautiful memories. <laughs> it's so funny because so, how you're thinking. That's so quiet because yeah. Kai's humor is very fast. Yeah. Like, yeah. He thinks very fast in his head. Yeah. Nah, I'm with and that. sometimes because happened today, <laughs> isn't it? We were in a group chat and like some guys said, some, uh, one of their brothers said like, oh, um, oh, sorry. Um, Sometimes I can be a bit direct, and then Kaya says something funny, but then like sometimes people don't catch it. Yeah, yeah. But so, it's like Samir, I think, like that as well. But yeah, so I think I, very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, but I, I like that. I think, yeah. quick, look, I think it's your quick witty. No, no, it, was, it come across passive aggressive. He was not trying to say something funny. He's exactly. like, oh, he's like, how, he's, how, how did Omar react? He didn't react at all. I was on oh, bed. Nah, he was, he, he was so lovely, no, but in my head, in my whole <laughs> yeah. But I mean, a lot of people would have because it was like it sounded like I was being passive aggressive. No man. And I was like in my head, like why did I say it like that? But I have to laugh. It was five, so, five no, years no, later. No, we no, back no, to no. it was it was fun, bro. I remember. No, I remember that, bro. It was very poignant, man. We I remember where we sat. It was by the front. Yeah, you know, nice. the, the whole the doors were open. And you gave me some real good advice that day. I can't remember. We spoke about that's quite bad of me. Um, nice. Yeah, I remember. But it was yeah. But it was it was it was lovely, man. It was really nice to to. But I actually remember because as soon as Fasul mentioned your name and then I think you faced up me when you were going you walked, <laughs> yeah. through, were you walking through the desert or something where were you walking sand ah well, yes, fresh grounded uh, we we oh at yes Shahid's house just walking through like one kind walk of. to grab a drink or something yeah yeah and you called me I was, I was like yeah I remember him yeah it was lovely man. I'm so glad you guys met up because Thank definitely you. know the fact that in the first meeting you can have that type of energy and vibe you know it's very rare for people to have that man it's, it's crazy bro, and it's so crazy bro you've watched you've watched every episode from episode one Oh my, I was like, I mean, I didn't have a lot. Sorry, yeah. very embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Nice. But like, you studied every minute. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know how many, how many hairs he had on his beard? 100%, man. I manually annotated the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 100%. I, and you can ask my wife, like, I, I used to, like, watch FG. i like, oh, it's so nice to meet Faisal one day. That's so sweet, man. And and that's crazy, like, bro. Like, he even sent a message. I don't know. No, no, no. But you said that my whole life. But you said it. You said it. Pyro. You messaged a question to what Sam what was he, um, met so Omar. When I, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So when I, no, when I was in, um, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> exactly. How did exactly, Pyro exactly and Omar meet? Yeah, yeah. We, we, how did you guys meet? How do we meet? A DM. Yeah, you was. I think you was looking for a videographer. It was COVID. Bro, I remember I DM'd you, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, so what, he was on socials? You, you found his... I think I think the, your stuff was coming up and we were looking for someone to join was, the team. Yeah, he was looking for a video, videographer. Yeah, we were. And we then were, he was yeah. like, hey man, like, are you in London? And then yeah. we started talking and we organised to meet. I can't remember where we met. And then we met up for dinner. And what we were just talking mean? for hours, bro. What I remember. It was in West Ham. I remember I drove far to get there, bro. bro. Should I think something about that, that oh, really? meeting, bro, oh, wow. that you probably don't know. You might know it, I don't know. Omar called me off that meeting and there's only two people he's ever done this with, bro. Yeah? And you'll be happy whose company you're in. He called me and he goes, bro, I just met this guy. His name's Cairo. But I'm telling you, sickest guy. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like bro, he's just like me. We got like, we literally, he's like looking in the mirror. Like, we're just like talking, we're just the same person. Fact, yeah. Talking about everything, we're just like vibing. Like, bro, I'm telling you, I'm bringing this guy in. He's, he's coming on the office on like Monday. <laughs> 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 he's like, bro, you're gonna love him. Like, I'm telling you. And honestly, like, you hear him talking, bro, I was like, bro, this guy's sick. But the only two people that Omar's like, he's been so, 
gassed about the interaction. Like he's bailed me, bro. This guy's sick. Is you? Do you know who the other person is? No. Kareem. Oh, oh really? He said the exact same thing about Kareem. He was like, bro, this guy's sick. He's like, he's like the Spanish me. Like, <laughs> and, and bro, look at this now, bro. Like, you and Kareem are still both in all of our lives oh, and cream is like bro we were, just, we, were, we were just sitting we were just sitting together just system. now you know and it's so fascinating first of all congratulations on everything both of you have done i think it's incredible like the fact you guys come out here you know i'm inspired by it, it man like you know what i mean like i'm a student of your guys's kind of growth out here as well like you know and even to be able to come here and, and see what's possible and even like find ways to join forces all of us man like we and kyra having a great conversation even seeing what Kyra's doing now, it was crazy. We were sitting there. He was asking me what, what we're doing in the Middle East. I was asking about what he's doing. I'm like, bro, there's like so much room for us to collaborate, you know, and that would be so exciting, man. And just before we came in, we, we were FaceTime to the guys in Riyadh, you oh, know? Well, yeah, because yeah, I was just, just introducing them guys and, you know, because I think it's there's so much, you know, that, that always resonates with, you know, when we when we collaborate. And I think even in London, by the way, we did some like amazing, some of the work we created today, to, today, like that Black Friday thing and everything. Yeah. It's some of my favorite right. work we did, man. And so, you know, and it's funny, even in London, before uh, when we started doing this, uh, when I came back and spoke to the team in London about the, the Middle East stuff, the first thing they said is, you'll have you spoken to Cairo. You know, because, and I, yeah, and it was crazy. It wasn't even on my mind until I sat with you today at dinner and I was like, bro, you know what? Like, it'd be so nice to find a way to collaborate again because but you know, even like, energy, man. Just even the first, first, first ever shot of the first generation Freshly Grounded game. Wow, yeah. In the, off in the feed source office in London, Cairo shot the images from, do you remember that? With, and you shot, the, no, you shot a promo video, the first ever promo video, other than the advert with your macro, was it macro lens that was called? Micro lens? Oh, uh, yeah, the micro lens. I miss that mm. lens. Yeah, you I don't have it anymore, do you? I sold it. Cause I didn't use it. I think yeah, that's the last time I even used it. Is it? Yeah, it's the weird lens. That was to use, years ago. It? Yeah. Plus, I got a Sony camera, so it was on a Canon one. But bro, mm -hmm. I was gonna say, like, even like when we when we first met, before we, I went there, I was thinking, oh, it's, I have to like do this interview, and like I felt like it's gonna be an interview. Bro, we just spoke nothing about work. Do you know what I mean? And in my head, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't care. Like, if he offers me nothing, or if he offers me a little bit, or if he offers me a lot, I was like, this is my opportunity to learn. And I think that's. Like that was the first time where like I was like, this is a learning curve for me. And like even to this day, I'll still take like free jobs because I, I use it as my template to learn because they mm -hmm. can't tell me nothing because mm -hmm. it's for free. Mm -hmm. But I use it as an opportunity to learn. You know, <coughs> and I feel like free source was like, that's when I learned that that tactic. Like, let bro, me I appreciate just... it, man. You're a soldier, bro, man. Like you, Adnan's been like that. Nate's been like that. Like some of the best creative talent that we still have work, work with today you know, you guys, I think, stand out so much because you're willing to be like, all right, cool. Let me understand what's required here. Yeah, Let me yeah. do my best. You know, I think that's so great. And to the point of, by the way, the free uh, thing, I'll actually give some maybe strategic advice here, which uh, which works really well. This, this is how we actually managed to work with uh, one of the biggest customers we work with today, who I won't share the name of. But um, what you can do with free work to make it work well for you strategically in the long term is at the beginning, understand what they're trying. So when, when, we, when we were approached by a specific client, we kind of literally just took the meeting immediately. And this is one thing, by the way. First of all, as soon as someone's given you some level of, you know, uh, interest or wanted to meet you, it's like we, we all have, you know what I mean? Like immediately just at least have a conversation yeah, all the yeah. time. Like I can't admit at least, we always speak, like, you know, immediately jump on the things, at the very least have a conversation and to understand what's going on. I think like that's what's exciting. Then as soon as you feel like there's some value for you to add, you should find a way to do that for free. You know, to give that to that person and say, look, let me give this value to you, you know, and and, it, and when you do that, the the they might ask you, probably will ask you, like, how much it's going to cost to do this. And a, a a way that we normally do it is we will offer the service for free, but we'll let them know what this normally costs. And so when you tell them that first, you're prefacing it for if it is if a business sales kind of uh, process, you're kind of prefacing it what the price normally is, and so they're aware. Let's say I don't know it costs like you know two grand for you know a shoot. Let's say. You know, and so you're like, we're going to do five shoots for you for like two grand. And so it's 10 grand worth of value we're giving to you, but we're doing it for free, mm. you know. And so there obviously there's a cost there for you to bear, but you'll be able to provide a service. The interesting thing is that down the road, when you end up engaging with them on a longer term, you've already, you've, you've softened the pricing conversation massively because by the time you come to now actually price it up, they already took the service when it was free, you know, but, you know, still costed up by all benefits to them. So the value of it, they still took. Mm. And so when you're now pricing up, you don't have to worry about the whole thing where well, I gave it free and I have to figure out how to cost it up. So you actually have a lot more space at the beginning to really charge what you want, yeah, yeah. but you don't actually have to charge them. Mm. So you can give them your rate card and the service and do a 100% discount. 
and then later on even if you have discounted more you the, them. yeah the baseline's already set and That's every cool. time it works by the way and so they're cool ways to still be able to do things for free to your point earlier like do I have to intern or now like you can do it in strategic ways but it still will be like money at the end of it but be able to give your value and set the price so I think anything you can do to like be in front of people move around bro I think it's so important man like as much as you can but I also, I also use it as like a like my learning curve do yeah. you know what I mean like because I know it's free <clears throat> I'm not losing out on too much other mm -hmm. than time mm. so then what I do is I put in as much time as I can to learn new skills new tools and things like that during the free work and I try and do like I have like every month I try to do a free work here and there every month because it's like it's the only way I'm gonna learn and grow and push myself do you know what I mean whereas when it comes to paid work it's you're, you're kind of limited the client got yeah. briefs and creatives on my like what I do for work Whereas when you're doing it for free, it's like, look, I want to do this for free because I just want to create your freedom. Yeah. And I think I think that's one of the best ways as well, like to grow. Other than your way, what you're saying is that to to level up your your pricing strategy uh -huh. and do it strategically. I think in terms of skill wise, yeah. free work is one of the best of ways. I think to build a portfolio 100%. to get your name out there. Yeah, man. And especially in the Middle East. That's that yeah, was, and especially as a creative as well. Yeah. The people we really respect the right people, but if you collaborate with the right people, they're respected both ways. They respect the fact that like, you're willing to do that because they, they might be from that background themselves and know what it takes to hustle and to figure things out. And so they know the value of an opportunity that they're giving you. But also, they'll, they'll, they speak that language as well. So like, if you perform at a certain level, they know how to reciprocate. Mm. You know, how to give that back to you, whether it's offering you a job very quickly, whether it's giving you more opportunity, whether it's building a relationship. They know what that means because, bro, there's certainly the right people are certainly not going to take you for mugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the wrong people will like extort you and just be like, try and make you work for as less as possible for as long as possible. And that's not the goal here for anyone. You know, I think if you collaborate with the right people and offer things for like, you know, free and can get experience in, though, like to Fassel's point earlier, the relationships that you can gain off that, man, are just incredible. And people remember that for a long time as well, don't they? So. And, and even, even the back of that, like in the Middle East, it's still, a, it's still like a growing market. So, like if you can stand out as a talent, there's not that much talent out here yet. So like if you can stand out, you are the go-to guy well, for the, the next year. The thing that's my well. mind about the Middle East is that like when I've come out and seen that, yo, like what we have in that part of the world, if we can bring that here in terms of, you know, infrastructure, like whole infrastructure, I mean like as entire companies, you know, and then with the level of talent we have here, like the stuff I hear about you, what you, you do and how Faisal speaks of you, by the way, like the skill sets you have to me are like, bro, a killer, you know what I mean? For like some of the stuff that you could do. I which, by way, I haven't, even, I haven't yeah. no, but I haven't even been like privy to them personally. But I think that's like so exciting because they don't have that now they do, but like they, they're still there's like a there's like a huge amount of value to be captured, right? Even with what you're doing, like in terms of creativity here. That's what we see here, you know, like creative content. You know, we're the reason we're deciding to base ourselves here is because there's such a vast amount of room for growth here. You know, and like we said, talent, like training up talent, giving, creating ecosystems where everyone can thrive and grow. Like, you know, we should be bringing talent here from yeah, the yeah. UK and America yeah. and, even, and giving them space to grow as well. Bro, even where, yeah. like if you, feed source two years ago, if that was to launch here today, mm. it's still ahead of time. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like where you guys are now is way ahead. Like right. if you were to strip it back just to start here, right. where you guys was two years ago when, when I was there, Bro, you're still ahead mm. of the game because mm. no one's doing that and no one. And I think once you start introducing it, everyone's like, oh, we do need that. Mm -hmm. And we don't have anyone to do it. So who are they going to go to? Like, it's, it's, you're, you're standing out. Yeah, man. And I feel like that's the one of the best things about the Middle East is like to, the, the room to to have something so unique is large. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. I mean, and I, I think it's got a time limit on it, though, because there will come a time like in the UK where there's a lot of people doing great things. So it's. You have to capitalize on the right time. Yeah, which is yeah, now. which is now. But Saudi is growing now, so I think yeah. you got uh, let's say five years, ten years. For sure. I think it's, uh, it's at least ten years. Yeah. I mean, we 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 are deceptively early here. Like this is like mm. Dubai. To, obviously, I wasn't alive, but from what I can, I'm well, not alive. I wasn't alive. I can't but, remember. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. But like, it feels to me from what I can gather, this is like London thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. We're very very early in terms yeah, of yeah. again property. We we we're, we're into but also just like the startup ecosystem, mm -hmm. everything. Uh, just like the the population e even is like tiny here compared to some we uh, western cities, mm -hmm. and that's an opportunity in and of itself. Mm -hmm. You can start things here that okay, the population isn't quite there yet where this idea will pop off today. But if you build it now in two years time, as the population grows, it starts to pop off. There's a, there's a hundred businesses that fit that mold. Yes, do you know what I mean? So we we're, we're, we're very early. I think like deceptively early. And I think one I've been listening to you guys very very like closely here. One 
question that I know a lot of people are going to have listening to this is like, okay, how do I get started in this, right? How do I do what you guys are trying to do, build stuff? Because I sometimes get D- get DMs where it's like, okay, bro, I've started an agency and I've like reached out to like two companies, but no one's got back to me, what should I do? And it's like, I feel like what no one's touched on yet that everyone, that you three have is like um, this tenacity to just keep building things and doing things and trying things and tasting things, even when it's not working. And you just do something else, try something else. And it's, the fact is you're doing it because that's all you know to do. Mm-hmm. Even if 10 things in a row failed, you'd still, do this, you'd still build, try to build something else or build it in a different way or tweak it or tweak that. And you'd, you, you wouldn't stop until it started to work because that's just what you guys do, yeah? And I think that's what people, if you can't quite wrap your head around, because all the people who listen to this quite, quite wrap their heads around how you guys are doing stuff, that's the, the answer is you just keep doing it over and over and over again because that's what you do. So if you can't, and here's, I'm leading that to my point. If that's, if you can do that, lean into it. If you don't feel like you can do that, it's okay to also be like the number two or number three in a company or a startup where it's like, you're not going to be the one who's constantly doing the free mm-hmm. stuff every month or tweaking things for years on end until we get it just right or so on and so forth. But you can be someone who works with somebody who's doing that and bring your own value in that, in that way while they bring value in different ways to those around you right. yeah like, like the finances and stuff like that yeah I, anyways I, I had this thought um t- today and it was about what you're saying about like trying things and doing things and i thought i get really frustrated when um people don't like they don't have this level of like speed when like there's yeah. an opportunity or when there's something needs to be done it's like you, like you do it you're you've got that like fire in you and it made me realize that actually i also I think there's extremes on both ends because I, I think also there's a problem when people are too when people don't do things with enough speed. Then there's also a problem when people are too uh, don't aren't laid back, and sometimes you're around someone and they're not relaxed, they're not laid back. Kind of comes back to that narration about um, a person who is laid back. Uh, hey and laying. Yeah, but what's the heady for? Is it something know. like um, a person laid back? Um, uh, uh, Jahannam will be haram for him That's what it is The hellfire Is haram for a person Who's like uh, Like very laid back We'll find the exact hadith But the point is That being laid back Is a very good thing So I think sometimes uh, the pro- Like you get antsy When someone is like Too laid back But then other times the, the other issue is that When someone is like Can't relax That's also frustrating And there's a lot of people I think when you get the mindset Of like just Execute now Execute now Execute now They can't relax In social settings or they can't relax when it's time to relax and uh, like they're in your house and you know that they've got to go somewhere else or you're in a meeting with them and they're like, oh, I'm like checking the clock and stuff like that. So like you want to kind of have a balance. You know, there's, you know there's a, um, I think it's Ari Emanuel. <coughs> you find Emmanuel? Uh, yeah. Ari Emanuel, one, you know, Endeavor Group, which is one of the largest you know, media com- uh, talent agencies in the world. Um, and <coughs> he said, um, he, 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 he's to that point, I think it was on Jay Shetty's podcast, he said it, it, he notices that happens with people who can't differentiate between when they're on the field and off the field. Mm. And so like you have to know when it's game time. And when it's game time, there are environments, by the way, where you could be sitting like this and it's heavily strategic, you know, and it is work. Because when you are in a certain level of business, you know, what, work looks different, right? And it's sometimes when, it's, when you're off the field, when you're like, you know, when you're kids or family, you're a different person. You have to differentiate between two. If you can't do that, it's, you, you're, you're unlikely to really get to that level of success that you want. And so, you know, it was funny because we, we were literally in, um, we were, I, I was, you know, even out in Saudi, you know, we, we literally had a business meeting and straight after that, we were on a roller coaster <laughs> in Middle <laughs> and we were having a laugh about it. And we were like, look, this is work. And I'm laughing like, this is work. Like, you know, we are here, we're building a relationship, we're understanding, but we're having fun, but we're on the field right now. Like our conversation is strategic. We're trying to like figure things out, whatever. We were building a report at the same time. However, like, well, look, as soon as I get back to my hotel and I'm going to FaceTime with my family or speak to my friends or whatever, it's like, off the, you know what I mean? So that, like, that's the important thing to bear in mind. That, that reminds me of Bilal. So I told you about Bilal and right. you always met him. He's a good friend of mine now out here and he's... VP of marketing at uh, it seems like a two trillion dollar company or four trillion dollar company. Like, this guy's nuts, bro. Like he's like the epitome of like success in that in that in that world, all right. But I whenever I'm around him, because he's just a friend, I've not seen him in work environment. He's just one of the boys, man. He loves football. He just kind of cracks a joke. He's such a joker, like such a dad. You'd never think of anything else. But then you think, bro, this guy's been CMO of some of the world's largest companies. I just sometimes think to myself, like, he, he must be a bit of a killer. Yeah. Like, in a boardroom. You know? And so that was always in my mind. 
where he's someone who smashed on the field and off the field because and that's why I, I love that analogy so much because I finally got to meet somebody who has worked with him right and uh, I think Bilal put out Tender or something and um, this guy's company were like kind of picture for it I said what's he like in like a board like, when you're pitching to him he goes bro this guy's serious yeah. like when it's work bro he'll ask difficult questions because you're not pitching for small money bro like you're at that point and he goes, this guy's like, I, see, I, thought, I thought so. I can't see him, but I thought I could, I'd love to see him in that world. But that's someone who's got that balance. He's a dad of two young, get two little girls. Mm. It's like probably like just fun, loving, and yeah. I think um, yeah, I would love to, I would love to get that balance. I, I think, think I, I think with so many people our age now, like going to your thirties, being in your thirties, over the next de- ten years, like you've really got to look inwards in terms of what type of character ex- characteristics do I want to possess. In, in you know the life I'm building in general right now and your, all your roles right your your, your roles as you know uh, a husband a father all these type of things and we were like we were speaking with friends recently and we we're saying look when you come into the house you have to re- you have to literally remind yourself that as soon as you step to your house like when you think about work and like working my laptop however I know like you have a role you have a have a have a position to play now as a father or as a husband and, and, and it, done, I know but, it? but no but I think it actually can be easy by the way if you I think and we say this often as well it's like you have to want that like often I find people if you truly look inside it's like you've maybe ended up at a place where you're married and got kids right but if you truly want the family and it sounds crude to say because like well, well who wouldn't want kids who wouldn't want their wife or whatever but there, there are situations where people don't necessarily want to want that right because they are so focused on what they're trying to get for themselves and I think like if you when you walk into your home, there has to be a place that you want to be in and want to serve. You have to want to serve your wife, you have to want to serve your children, vice versa. I think you also have to want to, you know, be able to do what you're doing to provide, but also know that look, this is something that requires a level of work as well. And so sometimes when your head is like in the clouds there, you're missing from here. Mm. I think the thing that, at least for me, the, when I have been in th- that zone versus this other zone, the difference has been like when I've truly desired to be the best husband, the best father, you know, the best professionally. Because then when I'm in those zones, when I'm on those fields in the respective ways, I'm so locked into that, you know, I'm there for that, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Even when like, let's say we're together as like, you know, brothers, for example, you know, you have to like, okay, this is about how do we, how do we, you know, what's our relationship like? Like, how do we make sure this is what we want as, as brothers? And, and, and certain principles in a relationship as well, like the communication and all these type of things. So I think it's very important things, but now I think this is such a big thing that everyone has to think about now in these, in this part of phase of our life we're in, which can really excel you, I think. But I think from that brother's angle, uh, the one of the, I've learned a lot of lessons from you, but one of the ones that sticks in my head a lot, and I think about regularly, is um, is one that I, I try to carry through in all of my relationships with anybody. And it's, I remember one time I said something to you, I've told this story before, and I think there was a gathering at your house, and I was like, look bro, I can't make it, because of blah, blah, blah. And you said to me, something that you probably said thought you said in passing, but it stuck with me. And he said, bro, I'm your brother. You could just say to me, I can't make it. And I don't care. I'm never going to think, oh, he just can't make it. He's coming. And, and you said, the next line is the, is, a bit, is the bit that really hit me. You said, I'm the one person in the world that you never need to explain anything to. Like, I will never think wrongly. And so now, I thought that, how uh, nice is it to have a relationship where you don't have to expect, you could just say to someone, bro, I can't do that. And they're like, cool. And they're never going to think, oh, I remember that time did that. And so I've tried to carry that through in all of my relationships now where I'm, I'm sure I've even said it to friends before. I'm like, bro, like they've tried to explain things to me. I'm like, bro, I'm the yeah, one I've person. I've definitely seen that in your character as well, by the way. You can tell me cool. something. Yeah. I, I hear, like, I'm, I'm good. You do not need to, if you have to explain yourself to other people, that's fine. To me, don't have that burden where you feel like you have to explain yourself. Mm. You don't have to explain nothing to me. It's really nice if you can make your relationships with each other and your everyone around you like feel like gift-like, you know, like yeah. it's like a, <laughs> your presence being a present, so to speak. I know, am a nice. gift. To the world. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, Kai. Yeah. So why couldn't you make it? Yeah. Um, yeah, the hadith that you mentioned, um, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Shall I not inform you of um, the translation of it? Shall I not inform you of whom the fire is unlawful, and he is unlawful for the fire? Every person who is near to the people in brackets." Amicable and easy in brackets to deal with. Mm. Uh, since oh, I need to be more that much. Just easy going. Just relax. Yeah, yeah. Sure, I, I, you know, I'm back. You are easy yeah, going. Sure. I think everyone here I is easy going. I want to be horizontal. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they'll make us uh, easy going. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean. I mean.
All right, guys. I think that's a good time to end the podcast. We said we do now. We ended up doing an hour and a half. Thank you so much, uh, Omar. For nah, bro. Thank you, guys, man. It's been a vibe, bro. Kaya, Kaya, yeah, it's been lovely. Man. Bro, you know when I came, when I when Fassel, well, no, in fact, Fassel didn't even ask me to the pod. I came out there. I texted you in it. I said, yeah, bro, yeah, we got to do an episode pod, of the yeah. pod. I text Cairo as well, and I said, look, I've got to jump with you. We can do yeah, something yeah, together yeah. as well. So we'll definitely do that, inshallah. But then before 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 that, I said to Fassel as well, look, we got to get the boys involved as well, man. Like he said, he said, he said. We have to, we have to, we have to. So you know, it's it nice worked that, out. It's yeah. family. It's hot to interview family. Like, yeah. we're like, but I like this, man. I see you guys, you know, on the on oh, this no. together as well. Yeah. Like for me, this is such a a nice vibe, and it's how how you know I wanted to do it with you guys. So thank yeah, you, man. It's been it's been really nice, man. And it's always genuinely a pleasure. I know you. This seems like something that like you know. To, like for me it's like you know my brother or whatever like, I genuinely see this thing like a fan as well like when I see what yeah, you guys are doing it, I see it and it's where, where, where we're at man like it's literally a whole thing bro I'm the same know, man so. like I see it as a, as yeah, a fan bro. I'm like bro that Faisal wants me on the podcast I'm going you ain't really like or not I'm only gonna have a problem when you have a booking agent you know what I mean I'm gonna be like bro stop saying this is a fan this is what alright guys thank you so much these guys be looking at your house different these days bro Thank you so much, guys, for watching the episode. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, inshallah. And we'll see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.